All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our study on glorifying God through my illness. It's presented by the West End Church of Christ in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's been my pleasure to have been leading these studies along with Carol Duckworth, who deserves the credit. Carol hasn't joined us yet, but he deserves the credit for coming up with the topics and the outlines. So thank you to Carol. We'll let, uh, everybody let him know we appreciate him when he joins us here in a moment, as I'm sure he will. Uh, I'm especially thrilled to be back with you for these live studies. Uh, I, it was okay doing the recording by myself for last Wednesday or for last Sunday because I was going to be out of town and and it, you can't do it live when while everybody's getting dressed for church anyway. So uh, anyway, so it's glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be with all of you. But I don't know about y'all. I look forward much much more to our return to the building for the auditorium class. On July 5th. I, I hope everybody else is looking forward to that as much as I am. Uh, let's open up this uh, study with a prayer. And Rodney, we'll get you to lead us in prayer, please. Sure. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this beautiful day you've blessed us with, Father. We thank you for the strength that you've given us and the will to, to and the self-control to, to spend this time to open up your word and to learn about how we can better serve you as as heirs of your kingdom and salvation and and the everything you, you have prepared for us father help us to seek you your will first and put all our worldly thoughts aside and help us to hone our abilities and 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 to really focus on your word and to learn what it is that can help uh bring us closer to you and closer to each other uh, and everything that we do. We ask you to be with those who are dealing with illness and comfort them, help us to reach out to them and help them, let them know that we love them and, and uh, encourage them during their time of uh, illness and those who also who are struggling spiritually, that we can encourage them. And uh, as we all uh, fall into that from time to time, uh, we ask all these things and uh, your sons, name amen amen all right and there's all right and there's carol hey carol welcome welcome aboard all right we've already started with the prayer and and, and everybody thanks you for putting together the outline and the material as far as the the concepts and the outline so appreciate it and of course you know now we're winding down this class we've got this one then Sunday, and then uh, next Wednesday night, Carol's going to do a conclusion to the whole study, and, and then that's it. And it's weird because we haven't met a single time in person in the building, but it's good. It, it, this class, has, of course, has been about glorifying God through various aspects of our lives. And, and with this study on illness and the next one on death, it's a concluding or it's a, a, an appropriate ending to this study. Because those are kind of the end of life issues and the end of the class issues as well for the idea of glorifying God. Theme verses that we've been looking at for our study are from 1 Corinthians 6.20, for you bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And 1 Peter 5.6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. This is important for us to understand that, that our service, our life is to be one that brings glory to God because we belong to him as Christians. We belong to him. We don't belong to the world. We don't belong to anything else, but to God himself. And so it's important to, uh, to bring glory to him. I'm talking about illness and I, you know, I'm fortunate. I'm one uh, person who's never really had a lot of sickness. I had the flu of death back in, Oh, 1995. I thought I was going to die for about five or six days. Uh, it was, it was bad. It was uh, pre-COVID days. But anyway, I got over it. Other than that, I just, I, you know, I, I'm the kind of person that if everybody gets something and they're sick for three or four days, I'm sick for three or four hours normally. And it's just the way I, I my life has been. However, that doesn't mean I don't understand illness. 2007, my dad was 75 years old. He was serving as an elder for the Lindell Church of Christ in Texas, and he had been doing that for four decades. And then one day in 2007, I got the call, dad has cancer. It was a lymphoma that fortunately was treatable and, and it was conquered through chemotherapy and radiation. But what we didn't know was that the radiation was planted the seeds 
for a final illness and his death just a few years later. And it worked on him in two ways. One, the radiation was high up in his chest near his throat and it damaged his vocal cords. And as a result, they never would close completely. So he spoke with a rasp. And when he ate, tiny particles of food went down his trachea into his lungs. And that slowly began to cause him to get colds and pneumonia that would make it hard for him to breathe. He struggled with that for the last three or four years of his life. But in the meantime, he continued to serve as an elder until probably about 2010, or let's say this, 2000, yeah, about 2012, he decided to step down as an elder after about five years of, of that and, and of, of being sick and stepped down as an elder and because he just didn't feel like he could do it justice. However, and so he left it to the young men. That didn't keep him from worshiping God, and he remained faithful to the very end. In April of 2016, when he was 83, he was helping my sister clear tree limbs and leaves after a tornado had circled their house. Uh, good, uh, strange story, I'll tell you at a different time. But by then, he knew he was out there working, and he was at 83, out there picking up limbs, raking leaves, doing yard work. And, but he knew something was wrong, but he kept going until about May when he canceled a trip to visit us in Florida. He was going to come see us in Clearwater, but he couldn't because he was sick. The cancer had returned, but this time it was an incurable leukemia that was a result of the radiation that had been used to treat the lymphoma. So the radiation damages vocal cords, which caused pneumonia, which caused breathing problems, and it caused leukemia. So that in, in uh, June of 2016, he started uh, aggressive treatment, and it, but it, none of it would work, and he died on July 12, 2016, just a month past his 84th birthday. Now, I would imagine that every one of you here in this study that's with me tonight or anybody else who watches it later has a similar story. And so it's not that this story is unique that my dad suffered through this illness all of these years and struggled with it. I know Carol's dad passed away some time ago, and I know all of you have had struggle, uh, family struggles. But, and, and you, you have those uh, stories where hopefully, like my dad, they continue to glorify God. But some, maybe even most, or perhaps all of us, have stories where someone suffered through an illness and didn't glorify God. But it was always in, uh, and, and I have another story about that that I'm not going to share because I don't want to deal with that. Uh, and, and because it's just too much, uh, too much pain and suffering and, and it's not really the focus where I want to go tonight. Because here God was glorified. Here, was God, here God was glorified, and by virtue of someone living through his illness, even in his last days, he still glorified God. Now, what we want to do is I want to start working through the questions now and kind of open up the study for everyone's participation. I want to begin by reading Ecclesiastes 12. Who wants to read Ecclesiastes 12 for us? I'm going to add. Everybody's on mute here. So who... Um, anybody want to read? <laughs> you got to unmute I your button. Yeah. Becky, you want to do can. it? Okay. Sure. Please ask you It's a lengthy reading, but it's a beautiful reading, and it fits this whole idea of our illness that we want to talk about. Go ahead. What verses? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the whole chapter. Okay. All right. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth. Before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look through windows are dimmed and the doors on the street are shut. When the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high, and terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails, because man is going to his eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is snapped, 
or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher, all is vanity. Besides being wise, the preacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying and arranging many proverbs with great care. The preacher sought to find words of delight, and uprightly he wrote words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings. They are given by one shepherd. My son, beware of anything in my... I'm sorry. My son, be aware of anything beyond these. Of making many books, there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. All right. Thank you. Very good. Very, very good. That is just an absolutely beautiful passage, especially down through verse five there where he's talking about the the decline that takes place as we grow older. And obviously the text is looking at the end of life decline and and is um and we're not but we're not so uh, focused solely on that because we all know people who have suffered serious debilitating illnesses. I mean, you got Jonathan Holden, we're worried about what's going to happen with him, others that are young, that are struggling with issues, Mike Hall, who's had all this, this long-term back pain, and others that, that struggle with it. And so those things are connected to this. This passage addresses those issues, even though it specifically is addressing things that happen when we get old. And you know, maybe even some of you, I don't, I don't think that anybody here on the call has suffered from any lifelong disorder that would weaken or restrict you in some way. And if you do, you're, you're free, feel free to talk about it if you're willing to do so in our study tonight. But, but it, regardless, let's be sure to remember, we're not talking about just the decline of old age as we begin working our way through the questions. When the first one is, how can I glorify God through my illness? And so the first question, first answer that I came up with was, Consider God when you're healthy. There in Ecclesiastes 12.1. So what's he saying there in Ecclesiastes 12.1? Anybody? And when I say consider, what does the word consider bring to mind? Anybody? Well, my translation says remember. All right, remember. Remember just means to call to mind. And consider means to call to mind, think about. So when do you when do you want to start thinking about God? When you're sick or when you're healthy? When you're healthy and young. Yeah, the, the point here is that when you're healthy and, and in your youth. And so because what happens? You know, all of you, you know, you guys are young. All right. Me and Carol, we're the old folks here on the call. You guys are young. I, in fact, I'm the old the the, uh, the ancient one. Uh, I'll turn 60 in August and Carol's not 60 till next year, but you know, you guys are in your thirties, I think. And I'll just leave it at that. If you want to correct me, feel free. I don't think anybody's still in their twenties, but anyway, yeah, you're young and you, uh, you look, y'all you look healthy. You look like you're, you're ready to, to go and, and, and be in vigor and approach uh, life as uh, the, uh, Cajun Cook said, with great vigorosity, you just go after life uh, with a lot of vigor and energy, and you approach your service to God that same way. And so that's what the writer here, uh, I'm presuming it's Solomon, is saying is that think about God. Remember God when you're young, when you're healthy. You know, a lot of people your age are looking at God as something they'll think about when they get to be my age. But what happens when they get to be my age? They start thinking, they'll wait until they're in their 80s before they'll start thinking. They'll think about, they'll wait till they're my parents' age in their 80s before they'll think about God. As I talked about in the, the video last week on retirement, one of the things about living in Florida is uh, all those retirement villages and retirement areas, one thing that, that's very common about all of them is they're not there to worship God. They're there to enjoy their last years of their life and push off being ill or hope that they don't get ill because then they have to go into some kind of long-term care facility. 
So remember God, even when you're healthy, don't wait until you're sick. The next thing is consider God when you're ill. Think about it when you're ill. Look at Job chapter two, turn over to Job, just a few pages back in your Bible. Uh, hopefully you were able to read Job uh, chapters one and two. I know it was a I gave you some lengthy readings for this and it was kind of short notice. But in Job chapter two, we're not gonna read chapters one and two, but in Job chapter two, notice what happens to Job, verses seven through 10. Who wants to read Job seven through 10, two, verses seven through 10? Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a pot shirt of, to scrape himself while he was sitting amongst the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept God from, or good from God and not accept adversity? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. All right. So Job had obviously been a righteous man. And here now he is uh, and suffer and serve God when he was a pro when he was prosperous. Uh, that was one of the reasons why God brought him up in chapter one about how good a servant of God that Job was. And so, uh, you know, picture this: you got boils all over your body. Anybody ever had a rash or hives or something like that? An allergic reaction to something <coughs> that just ate your body, ate you up for a few days. Well, maybe not, but it, I, I, I can remember one time I was in, uh, in uh, where was I? In Panama City, Florida. A friend of mine lived there and I stopped there on the way home from college. And his mom boiled a, or fried up a bunch of oysters. And I just ate like a pig, ate as many as I could. And then we uh, went to a movie and I was sitting in the movie and I started itching. I was started and just was itching everywhere. And I went to the bathroom and I lifted up my shirt and had red welts, just red spots all over my shirt. I'd had some kind of an allergic reaction to the shellfish, to the, to the, the uh, oysters. Well, imagine, you know, being like Joe, just and no relief, no, not, no, no Benadryl, nothing that he could take that would really ease the pain. When I was in college, uh, Carol, you remember Scott Smeltzer, right? Yeah. yeah. When we, we were in a class, and we were in the Job class. I think it was Phil Roberts teaching the class on Job. And, uh, and Scott drew a little, Scott was a pretty good little artist, and he drew a picture of, the, uh, of Job sitting on a dung heap, scratching himself with flies buzzing around him. It was uh, kind of interesting. But So how did Job react to that? Did he decide to listen to his wife, or did he honor God, think about God even then? Um, even in, even in the middle of his illness, all he could think about was serving and honoring God. So, uh, you know, even when we're overwhelmed by pain, we need to continue to honor our God. The next thing I want us to think about is just the idea of consider the source. Notice in verse seven, Rodney, you read verse seven, who smote Job? Satan. Satan, all right, if Satan did it. Now, God allowed it to happen, but <coughs> Satan is the one that did it. Satan is the accuser, the attacker of God's people, the attacker of humanity as a whole. And so we need to consider the source. Satan is the source of our misery and the pain and suffering that envelops the world. Uh, Mark 5, verses 20 through 34 is the woman who is uh, with the issue, who touches the hem of, of the Lord's garment. And what anybody, without turning over and reading it, does anybody remember what it says about uh, her as far as the source of her suffering? All right, let's just turn over and look. Verse, Mark chapter 5, verses 22 through 34. Verse 26 says she'd suffered many things from physicians. All right, she had suffered from physicians. And maybe it's not in Mark 5, but one of the texts, some. One of the accounts says it was uh, she would have been afflicted by Satan. Maybe that wasn't the one. Um, uh, 
All right. You know what? And it's one of the other versions of it that, that says that. But uh, Satan had been the cause. Satan had harmed her. All right. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, who gave Paul the thorn in the flesh? Anybody? Was that from God? Because remember, it says that Paul had received these great visions. He had, he had been uh, lifted up. He didn't know whether in the body or in the spirit to uh, heaven and seen heavenly things that he wasn't even allowed to talk about. And because of the greatness of those visions, who gave him a um, thorn in the flesh? A messenger from Satan in verse 7. All right, as a messenger from Satan. So Satan is the one that inflicts pain. God doesn't inflict pain just for the fun of it. Satan does. Satan is the cause. That, that's why it's important for us to understand that, that when bad things happen in this world, God allows them because he has allowed us free will, and these things come about as a result of, of sin. But Satan is the, the source of those things. He's the one that actively stirs this up and got, and make and causes all these problems for people he is our enemy and so when we we are thinking about these things that it's important for us to understand that even if we're, if we're suffering if we're in ill we need to understand that it's that suffering comes from god and I, and I point that out because one of the things that i hear people say sometimes is that well you know god has a plan for me god had a purpose for my suffering and we seem to think that you know that well, actually, it's a form of Calvinistic determinism, and it's really not a biblical some, uh, concept. How did Paul know that the messenger was from Satan? Was it a guess, or did he get that information by revelation? Because he asked God three times to remove it, and the answer was no. I think sometimes we look at we look at people like Paul and, and some of these people who were who were divinely chosen by God to serve in the capacity of bringing the gospel to the world and apply what happens to them to us. Sometimes, in fact, most of the time, suffering that most of and the illnesses that we struggle with are simply the result of living in a cursed world. God didn't pick us out and say, here, I'm going to give you this disease. I'm going to cause this uh, sickness to happen to you uh, because Romans 1 tells us the world is suffering because God let humanity live without him. You know, this says God gave them up three times in Romans chapter one. God gave them up. Why? Because they didn't want God. So God said, okay, you don't want me. Here's my wrath. My wrath is you get to live in the mess that you create. And so without a divine prophet to tell us, we can never know if, in, if our specific illness was anything more than the result of living in a cursed world. So something that we need to be very careful about, consider that and consider that it comes from Satan and not necessarily from God or is, has, has any purpose other than in general allows us the opportunity to continue to glorify God. I think. Time and chance happens to all of us, as Ecclesiastes writer says. Third thing, a uh, fourth thing I want us to look at here under how we can glorify God in our illness is consider it as temporary. Psalm 90, verses 10 through 10, 12, tells us that uh, that four, you know, three score and 10 or 70 years is our lifespan. Uh, 80, if uh, we're strong, we can live till 80. My dad lived to 84. My father in law lived to 84. In fact, wait a minute, he lived to 85. He made it to 80, almost 80. Yeah, he made it to 85. Um, you know, so people live longer, but that doesn't mean that, that everything's great and that their health is good. Those last few years have been were really hard on my father-in-law. And I'll talk more about that in our the next study on, on death. Um, you know, these things, they're not forever. Look in 2 Corinthians. I want us to look over 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is the great passage. And because Paul talks about, you know, the suffering and the difficulties and the and things that he's going through. But in verses 13 through 18, somebody read that for us. 
2 Corinthians 4, verses 13 through 18. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who has raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us up from Jesus with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are, your, are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, um, may cause thanksgiving to abound in the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us in a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right. So by believing... Paul has this faith and he's speaking about these things and he says that the same person, the same being, God, the Father who raised Jesus, will raise us with Jesus and present us with, uh, Paul is here, will present us with you. And so the, the brethren, Paul will be presented with the Corinthian brethren in eternity before God with the Lord. And he says, all of these things on the earth, they're temporary. They don't last forever. Uh, how many of you have, how many of you live in your forever home? Anybody? Have you heard that phrase before? Okay. They're all quiet tonight. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's an invention of the realtors to try to convince people that they can have their forever home. That, and I think Sarah McLaughlin did it with the, the, uh, the, the animal uh, cruelty commercials give that some dog or cat its forever home. Well, you know, it's not forever. It's going to be for a temporary. It's all temporary. It's not going to last forever. And so we need to prepare for the, what will last forever, eternity with God, and be ready for that. Any thoughts or questions about this first question? James, I think um, going back to uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, I think it's interesting that in verse seven, it says, lest I be exalted above measure, um, that he, he looked at, at his trials and his sickness as being, or his illness as, as a way of, you know, of, of understanding. And um, maybe in our lifetime, when things come our way, that we, we just, you know, need more often to look, know that there is something far better out there, that it is temporary. And so, um, when we come across, you know, these things that, that interfere with our normal life, you know, we have to remember that it's, it is only temporary and that there's something far better and far greater. And maybe it serves as a reminder for us. And so we have to look at it really as a blessing. And I think in verse 9, it says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. So it gives them you know, that opportunity. I think also in the 11th chapter of, uh, of John, when it was talking about the death of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Were you going to talk about that, Annie? Yeah, in the next study. We're okay. Gonna, we're going to talk about death in the next one. I just said, I think it's sort of interesting that the, um, in verse 4, though, chapter 11, says, this sickness is not unto death. So, um, and we know that, you know, he was going to die and that he was going to be raised. But it says, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So, you know, in our sickness, I, I know it's a little different because Lazarus actually did die. But in our sickness, you know, we need to be able to glorify God. Yeah, yeah. Put, our, put our faith in him. Know that it's not going to be uh, forever. This body is not our home forever. And it's all temporary. It's going, it will end. And we need to learn to look past this time on earth to that time when it ends. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. In our next study, we we'll talk about death here uh, in a little while. But I want to go to the next thing, uh, the next question very quickly. We're running out of time, so I want to go through these quickly. What are some ways we don't glorify God through our illness? I'll just go through these. We forget God until we hurt. We don't remember. Take the opposite of what we talked about. We don't remember God in our youth or while we're healthy. You know, we're healthy. We're great. Everything's good. Yeah, God, hey, yeah, I'll get around to you later. Maybe, you know, eventually. Well, then, uh, you know, we're not glorifying God 
if we wait until we're hurting until to think about him at all so we forget about god until we hurt and then we don't we're not going to glorify god in our illness because now all of a sudden it makes the sudden interest in god look questionable you know insincere you know, it's like the old thing of, you know, praying, you know, God, if you get me through this, and then as soon as they get through this, and then you, people say, well, what about God? Well, he got me through it, and then I'm done with it. You know, there, there's no interest in continuing that. Uh, another way is to curse God for our pain. That's what Job's wife told him to do. Just curse God and die. Get it over with. And Job, of course, said absolutely not. But how many people say, you know, blame God when things go wrong? And I think part of that is due to, um, you know, the Calvinistic doctrine of, of sovereignty of God, which means everything that happens is caused by God, directly dictated by God. So if you have a child that gets sick and dies, when they say God had a plan and, and it was God's plan that this happened, they believe that, that that God caused that. And, and, you know, and that, that's a cruel, vicious God, you know, small G pagan God that I can't even begin to conceive of. And so but that's how people do is they curse God for our pain. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, oh, and then claim divine specific divine planning uh, Romans eight. I, I, we don't have enough time to really go look at that, but you know, that's that idea that, that God dictates what happens to us. That's Calvinistic determinism. And it, it, just pops up in all kinds of ways. So be very careful about that when you say, well, God had a plan for me and, and this was part of God's plan for me. Maybe not. Maybe uh, it was God allowed you to do something stupid. I, I, I like the one thing that, uh, you know, there was, um, you know, <laughs> the guy said that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes the reason is that the person is an idiot. Um, and so let's be careful about saying everything happens for a reason as if it's God making it happen. That's, that's that Calvinistic predetermined uh, determinism. We can't know. We're not prophets. We don't know when things happen by the divine direct providence of God or just by time and chance and living on a cursed earth. We just don't know. And so we need to learn to just rely on God regardless by, and as, as we look forward to our eternal Redemption. All right, let's go through these next questions quickly. Uh, steps we, we can start trusting God now, and we keep trusting him when we are hurt, and we know who caused it. That's Satan. I want to get through these quickly, and then I'll throw it open for the last four minutes here. Benefits when I glorify God through my illness. Our faith is strengthened. Inter eternity becomes more real. I think kind of that's what you were talking a little bit about, Carol. Others are encouraged. Mark that passage, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 10. We don't have time to read it right now, but mark that down and, and go back and read 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 10. Just a beautiful, beautiful passage there about what God has uh, done in the middle of a church that was suffering. Now, they were suffering persecution, but they encouraged others because they embraced it. All right. And the next thing is consequences when I do not glorify God through my illness. God is dishonored, period. That's what, uh, you know, that's why God, Job said, I can't do that. I'm not going to dishonor God. Uh, the present, we get focused on the present. We forget about eternity. And we looked at that in 2 Corinthians 4. Uh, attitudes, selfishness, bitterness, anger. Those are some attitudes that just become ingrained in us when we're not glorifying God in our illness. And then the last thing, sins promoted when I do not glorify God through my illness. Blame God. We, we just blame God. I think that's the only one I put down. All right, we, we got four minutes. Who wants to talk? Throw in some comments here. James, I think it's really easy as, uh, as people who all too often think that all the good things in our life are because of what we have chosen to do. But when something bad happens to us, it must be someone else's fault. Um, and we we uh, look for ways to pawn that off, just as Adam did, you know, when he said, this woman who you gave to me, uh, gave to me and I ate it. You know, I mean, we try to shift blame uh, onto other people. But, and, but there are a lot of people uh, who at West End that I've witnessed who have gone through 
spiritual illness and physical illness, whether it be in their families or through uh, physical illness and have shown their faith through their continued service and, and, and becoming even stronger. And it really is a testament that I think that when he's talking about uh, remember God in your youth, that's the time to prepare. The time to prepare for sin is before you're in the situation, before it happens to you. And if you don't prepare for it beforehand, chances are you're more likely to fall into it. And it's no different than with this. We have to understand that one day we are going to pass and, and or something's going to overtake us. That we're, But we have to remember, like you said, that, that this world is not our home and we have to lay up treasure somewhere else. Uh, in heaven and there are so many people that i've seen within just the last you know 10 years uh, at west end who really bring this thought home you know whether it be physical uh illness or, or spiritual illness uh that when it strikes the family yeah preparing in advance and demonstrating for others here's how you do it here's how you get through it yeah it's called you know in baseball or, or sports it's called muscle memory you know, you have a powerful power hitter. Uh, how, how much of their action is just from years and years of practice? There's no conscious thought. It's or it's so fleeting that that just their muscles move by almost by themselves. This is kind of how we can glorify God in the same way. Is that if we will put our faith and our trust and rely on God and begin when we're young when we get older or when an illness strikes us, say we're still in our forties, which 40, yeah, Carol, I can tell you, forties is young. You know, so if something hits you in your thirties or forties or maybe even younger. And you know, if you start it early, you, you're, you have a better chance to get through it because you prepared for it. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You know, that's why he says, remember, you're the, you're the creator in the days of your youth before all these things happen, before age really just starts beating you down. Because when it starts beating you down, it's bad. It gets rough fast. And I can attribute to that. I'll talk a little bit more about that in our study on death uh, later. All right. We've got uh, just probably a few seconds left. So. Again, I just want to thank everybody. We're going to uh, pick back up with our second study here in just a few in a few minutes, and talk about death and its impact on us. But in the morning, in the meantime, I want to thank all of you for your participation. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate your thoughts. Appreciate your your closing thoughts there, uh, Rodney. Very much. Uh, this is a a very very important uh, topic. And it's important for us to glorify God and everything. So our next section will be glorifying God in our death. And uh, we'll talk about that here in just a moment. And uh, let's see.